So on the one hand, this is the first deal between the Biden administration and Iran since they came to office in January 2021, uh, and it could potentially open the door for more diplomatic engagement. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it is a, a deal that is uh, not really resolving the key issues between Iran and the United States. So uh, there are still plenty of uh, points of friction and tensions that could uh, bring down this entire edifice uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, the critics of this deal often complain that this is a uh, ransom payment to Iran, uh, overlooking the fact that uh, ransom is never paid by the hostage taker. Uh, this is Iran's money uh, that is being used uh, to free uh, Iran American uh, hostages in Iran. Uh, the U.S. has not paid any money to Iran. Uh, these are Iranian assets, uh, and that's an important distinguishing factor to take into account. Uh, Iran, um, uh, based on U.S. Uh, uh, sanctions, laws, and regulations, should have had access to these uh, restricted assets for humanitarian aid all along. Uh, all the U.S. is doing is to move assets that were in restricted, restricted accounts in Seoul to restricted accounts in Doha, uh, with oversight uh, by the U.S. Treasury Department to make sure that these assets are only used for humanitarian trade. And as such, uh, the U.S. is not making a major uh, concession to Iran. And we have seen in the past that there is no correlation between uh, Iran's financial situation and uh, its regional policy, which is often a function of opportunities that it sees in the region for exploiting chaos. So now that, this, that Saudi Arabia has de-escalated uh, the war in Yemen, Iran has uh, much less of an opportunity uh, to exploit the conflict there uh, to destabilize the region. Uh, and that is the golden formula, not how much uh, uh, money Iran has in its own bank account.